Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to everybody in this room. Welcome to everyone joining us online. You were handed a program on the way in the door. You can pull out your message note sheets, open up your Bibles, 2 Samuel chapter 22. Those of you joining us online, your online host can direct you how to get those things electronically. We're going to talk about this morning the power of song. Isn't music such a gift of grace in this world? Can you think about a time in your life when you know beyond a shadow of a doubt there was that, that song, that lyric, that melody that just affected you in such a way that you were never the same on the other side of it? Is something coming to mind? For me, it was 1985. It was the Newton Roller Rink, the Friday Night Skate. Where back in that day, you spent the whole week trying to figure out who are you going to ask for the moonlight skate? Are you with me here? So I spent the whole week and I, I went out and I got some new wheels for my skates. I got the glow-in-the-dark orange wheels. Because man, when those lights get dim, those wheels are going to come on strong now, right? Right? And then it came, right? It came. They dimmed the lights, and I slinked my way over to this beautiful, blonde, blue-eyed gal, Kendra Ray Hodges. And I extended my hands. Would you join me in the moonlight skate? And I had spent several weeks working on this. I had to perfect the, the backward skate, right? Like, I had to get that down, like, I had, to, I had to know what I was doing because I'm going to hold her hands and, the, right, she can go forward and I can go backwards, right, with my nice, bright orange, glow-in-the-dark wheels. I mean, I had to get this down. This was the moment. And then, as she rose from her seat, the song came across the airways, and there I was, backward skate, holding her hands, looking into her eyes, Ario Speedwagon. <laughs> I can't fight this feeling anymore. I've forgotten what I started fighting for. You know the words, right? Come on. It's time to what? Bring this ship into the shore and throw away the oars forever. She had no shot after that moment. Her life was going to be forever changed in that moment. Do you remember it, honey? Like it was. Oh, she says, Oh, I remember it. It's the power of song. Some of you have a moment like that, right? Where you know it was just that moment, just that melody, just that lyric, and it just got lodged inside of you and began to bring shape. I mean, here I am, 30 plus years later, still singing that song. I asked some of our songwriters in the congregation, I sent out an email to Hunter and Ethan and Austin and Justin and Ian, you know, guys who write songs around here, and I said, what what goes in to the art of writing a great song? And here's here's some words they sent back. Availability, one of them said. An available writer is to songwriting what a bare canvas is to a painter. Well, that sounds like a songwriter right there, doesn't it? (laughs) Another said, there are sides of an artist's soul only seen through his or her art. Another said, patience. (laughs) One of them said, you got to write like 50 songs to get one good one. (laughs) That's true, right? And another said, there has to be an open-mindedness to the final product. Because where you start off a song, where it begins... It ends up very different than its original idea. You know, historians say that if you pay attention to the song of a generation, it gives a window into the soul of that generation. It's the songs that express the values and the longings and the questions of the people. And so today, we're with David, and we're at this place in David's life, he's now they think probably mid-60s, pushing 70. And David's looking back over the large arc of his life. Think about where we've been journeying with David since middle of April. 
And looking back over all the journey, all the ups and the downs, it goes from David the farmer to David the king to David the warrior to now David the songwriter. David's going to put pen to paper and he's going to write a song. And we're going to look at the lyrics of this song. We're going to see like three, three rhythms to this song. Three themes to this song that my prayer is we can maybe let that splash over on us. Maybe ignite something inside of us. A fuel and a song in our heart from David. So 2 Samuel 22. Notice if you have an NIV, the title of this chapter is David's Song of Praise. Verse 2, the opening stanza I'm calling History with God, I and He. Notice this, the Lord is my God. My fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. I want you to underline the I statements I come to now. I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation. Verse 4, I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise. And I am saved from my enemies. Verse 7, in my distress I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. Did you see that? Five times in the opening seven stanzas there. David refers, right, he says, I take refuge, I call, I'm saved, I call out. The point is, I think, at the opening stanza of the song, this song's personal. And any songwriter will tell you the most powerful songs are personal songs. Which is why country music sounds like what it sounds like, right? Every great country music artist must have had a deep breakup somewhere along the way. And we tune into the lyrics, and it's the, it's the authenticity of the writer being expressed in the words. For David, what he's expressing here, this is personal. He's not writing about some objective reality, just something outside there talking about something. He's talking about his 50 years of seeking God to be his refuge, of running and hiding from Saul and finding God to be his defender. 50 years of finding God to be his strength. When David was at the end of his rope, he found God to be his strength. 50 years. This is personal. That's where the I lyrics come out. Do you see that? The I. I have found. I have called. I have sought. It's personal with David. Now stay with me. I want you to connect now. I want you to see how the I flows into the he. And this is where David's history with God. Look at verse 10. He parted the heavens and came down. Verse 11, he mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. Verse 12, he made darkness his canopy around him. Verse 15, he shot arrows and scattered the enemies. Verse 20, he brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Do you see the connection? All of the eyes there in the first seven. Now, if you have a Bible, you can just start drawing the lines from the eyes to the he's. And you'll see all these overlapping realities. That it's all of David's I realities got framed and centered on the he realities. And in our lives, right, I and my can just dominate, right? The I and my realities, like, uh, I've got a struggling marriage, I've got failing health, I've got battle with finances, I've got a messed up work situation, I've got family members that I'm, I, I and me and my, it just, it can become so overwhelming and so dominant. All of those things are important and God wants us to be able to respond to those well and David himself, think about all of his I realities. David spent the first 13 years after God picked him, plucked him out for being a farmer and says, I pick you to be a king. 13 years of running for his life from King Saul, out in the wilderness, out in the desert, in and out of caves, surviving. Like his I and my realities were simply, I've got to figure out how to survive today. And some of you, that's right where you are today. Your I and me and my are like front and center dominant and maybe feel a bit like David's, overwhelming and insurmountable. But I wonder if God brought someone to church today to hear this. It's not just the I and the me and the my. I, me, and my is not the end of the story. The I and the me get swallowed up, right? Do you see this? 
The I, it's not I and me, it's I and he. You're going to say he with me. You say, it's not I and me, it's I and Do you see this? I mean, we, this is a, like David saying, hey, yes, I've been struggling, I've been running, I've been fighting, I've been looking for help, I've been looking for hope. And in the midst of all of those eyes, what I thought was just I and me, all of a sudden David says he's writing a song. No, it's actually been I and he. Do you know where David learned? says, David learned God could be his rock when he experienced everything washing away in his life. You know God's your rock then. It wasn't just I and me, it was I and he. David learned God could be his refuge when he was at the end of his rope, exhausted and about to give up, he found refuge. David discovered God could be his defender and deliverer when he was surrounded by his enemies and it looked like from external circumstance he was done. And in that space, he found God to come through. It wasn't just I and me, it became I and he. And you know this happens in our lives today, right? We can spend Monday through Saturday covered up by I and me and my. And we drag ourselves out of bed on a Sunday morning. And we round up the kids and we have that peaceful, blissful, fruit of the spirit drive to church where everyone's behaving so Jesus-like in the car all the way in from the parking lot. And you get the kids checked in and you get in your seat, you get your cup of coffee, you take a breath and then... The worship team starts striking up a song, and there's some lyrics from the song that start playing. And You bring in all of your I and me and my realities. You bring all the insurmountable obstacles. You bring the job challenge, the health challenge, the finance challenge, the marriage challenge. You bring it all in here. You walk in. You're feeling way down. It's all I, me, my. And then the team starts singing, and the song starts being played, and the scripture's being read, and the sermon's being preached, and you interact with some people in community, and you walk out the doors an hour and a half later, and you go, you know what? It wasn't just I and me. It's I and he. That God is with me. God is coming for me. God is drawing near. I am not nearly alone as I thought I was or felt I was. It's not I and me, it's I and he. This is the first stanza. Are you catching the rhythm of this song? This is David singing about his history with God. And everybody's got some history with God. If you're here in a blue chair, if you've got breath of life in your lungs, you've got history with God. And a first part of the song of David's soul reminds us of, hey, let's take some time and think about our history with God. Bring our I realities Set the I, the me, and the my under he and his and him. Let the he, his, him bring shape to the I and the me and the my. And we'll begin to see some things, I think, shift through David's song. As he's passing this song on to the generation that's coming before him. Now let's look at the second part of the song here. Jump down to verse 29. He adds to it. He goes from singing about his history with God. Now he's going to sing about the power of God. And in this he says, I may not know how, but I know who. That's how I summarize this point. Look at verse 29. You are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord turns my darkness into light. Verse 30. With your help I can advance against a troop. With my God I can scale a wall. Now, On this journey with David, we know he's gotten a front row seat to darkness, right? David knows something about darkness. He knows about darkness on the inside. We've looked at some pretty dark times in David's life. Some darkness, self-inflicted decisions he made, and he knows all about darkness surrounding him. Like, David knows that there's a whole bunch of people that don't have God's favorable opinion of him. He knows about darkness. He knows about enemies coming for him. He knows when the king of the land is deploying the best of the troops and the main agenda is to find him and kill him. David knows about that. David knows about walls that he comes upon that look unscalable. David knows all about those things. And here's what David's singing about. David, do you picture this? David says, I I may not know how, I may not know how that darkness is going to come to light. 
I may not know how those enemies are going to be subdued. I may not know how that wall is going to be scaled. Stay with me here now. I may not know how, but I know who. David says, I don't know how that darkness is going to go to light, but I know who's going to do it. I may not know how those enemies are going to get pushed back, but I know who's going to do it. I may not know how that unscalable wall is going to get scaled, but I know who's going to do it. It's the God, right, that David brings up in the first stanza. It's the God of the I and the he. David says, it's that God. It's the God who brings light to the darkness. It's the God who defends and protects. It's the God who enables us to get through what we can't believe we're going through. It's that God. It's the God who says, hey, I'm the God who called you from the farmland and put you into the throne room. I called you, I anointed you, that God. The God who protected you when you were on the run in the wilderness of Judah all those years. The God who stayed with you when you fell on your face in sin with Bathsheba. And when Nathan came to you and confronted, and you humbled yourself and confessed, that God who kept working with you, that God who kept coming for you, that God who was there when the family was fracturing and unraveling, and Absalom was taking over the kingdom, and David's running off again one more time, that God, when he's there with deep grief and loss, when he would lose loved ones, and he would be weeping in his pile of tears, that God. David says, I may not know how I'm going to get through what I'm going through, but I know, say it with me, who. I may not know how, but I know. I may not know how this marriage is going to get turned around and set on the right track, but I know who. I may not know how this dead-end job situation is ever going to get going any direction, but I know who. I may not know how this failing physical body, either that I am enduring or maybe you're sitting beside the bedside of someone who is, how difficult that is to watch a loved one fade away physically. I may not know how God's going to walk that out, but I know who. I may not know how that mountain I'm staring at is going to get moved from here to there, but I know who is going to do it. It's the God of the I and the He. It's the God who said, I am coming for you. I am staying with you. I am working with you. I am present to you. When you thought you were all alone, David's like, All I had to do was step back and look up and realize God is here. God is present. I've got history with him. And that history with him demonstrates I know how the darkness is going to get turned to light. I I don't know how. I know who's going to turn it to light. I I don't know how all these enemies are actually. I don't know how the Philistines. I don't know how Saul's soldiers. I don't know how I'm going to make it through tomorrow. But I know who's going to enable me to make it through tomorrow. I don't know how that wall that looks like there's no way we can scale that wall. I don't know how that's going to happen, but I know who's going to be there to help and to guide. Are you catching the rhythm of this song, church? Are you feeling it? It's a rhythm that can kind of get into the inmost place. It can get into the soul. It can begin to bring shape, right, to our everyday realities. That isn't just I and me and my. It's I and he and him and his. And it's okay to bring the I don't know how stuff to the Lord. Just say, hey, press it one step further. Don't just stop with the I don't know how. Anchor yourself on the who. You don't know how, but you know who. I love what, I put a quote in your notes. The Homer, Greek poet, the old Homer from the 8th century. Our students in here know all about it. They probably have to read way too much Homer that they don't understand. I'm giving you one sentence here that you might appreciate, students. So, I will stay with it, Homer says, and endure through suffering hardship. And once, follow this, once the heaving sea has shaken my raft to pieces, then I will swim. (laughs) How about that statement? Some of you come in where the heaving sea has shaken your raft to pieces. That's right where you are today. 
David's got a PhD in that. He hasn't had a raft since the Lord picked him. God picked him, and then the heaving sea trashed his raft, and he hasn't gotten it back. He'd been swimming. And what has he found? Huh. He's found he's got history with this God. It isn't just I and me and my. It's I and he and him. And he's found when the heaving sea has trashed his raft. How am I going to get through what I'm going? I may not know how, but I know who. I found a God who turns darkness to light. I found a God who pushes back the forces that are coming against me. I found a God who enables me to get over what I can't believe I'd ever be able to scale and get over. I may not know how, but I know who. I've got power of God. Do you feel this, the soul of this song? Do you feel it? Catch the rhythm. History with God. The I and the he. The power of God. I may not know how, but I definitely know who. And now one more piece to the song we'll look at today. Verse 37, check this out. Notice the flow in David's song. He starts with the I lyrics to the he lyrics. And verse 37, now to the you. I, he, to you. You broaden the path beneath me so that my ankles do not turn. Check that out. You broaden the path beneath me so my ankles do not turn. I want you to think about all the times, right, in our lives where if you guys, those of you in sports know all about this, right, you just, you're playing, you're playing a game of basketball, soccer, football, right, and you just hit that and you just turn and twist your ankle. Lily was our cross-country runner for so many years, and one of the things she battled was her ankles a lot of times. And I remember one day she called us and she's like, hey, mom, dad, like I was just in practice and I'm just running down and she just kind of hit an uneven patch or a rock or something and just Rolled her ankle in such a way, and boom, stress fracture on the bone there, season over. And just went down. I mean, just rolling your ankle. So here's David, like, here's David drawing a picture. And we've looked at enough of David's life to say, it's like David was making decisions at certain stretches of his life in his own wisdom and strength. It's like when you're walking or running and you roll your ankle. It's called twisted ankle living. When you're just making decisions out of your own wisdom and strength, Falling on your face. It's like the, the runner who just goes down and ends up in a boot. David's like, you see this picture? Like he, he's now, he's singing about this. He goes, well, I've spent enough time like making decisions how I want to make them. And it's like I've rolled enough ankles. I've twisted enough. I picture David singing this song with taped ankles. Like he's got a PhD with athletic tape. It's like, hey, roll up my ankles again because I've messed them up again. I've rolled my ankle again. I made another I fell over again, and God picks him up again, tapes up his ankles, and then he comes to this conclusion. He says, there's another way to live. You don't have to live just guiding your life in your own wisdom and strength. David says there's another way to live. The guidance of God says, right, you can actually live a God-guided life. You can actually link yourself up with the God who the scripture says sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. Isaiah says it this way. That all its people are like grasshoppers. How about that God? Or Isaiah talks about how the God who numbers the stars and calls them each by name. Scientists today saying approximately 100 billion stars in our singular galaxy. And there's about 100 billion other galaxies Besides our galaxy. And God's got a name for all those stars. So lest you think your baby naming book is plenty thick. God's got names we know not of. And David says, you can link your life up with this God who calls the stars and knows the stars. Who sits enthroned over the circle of the earth. Who possesses wisdom and knowledge beyond comprehension. Like you can link up with this God and he'll level the ground under your feet. He'll broaden the path beneath you so your ankles don't turn, so you're not rolling yourself, so you're not falling on your face. That's an unbelievable invitation from God. David sings about it. He goes from his history with God, I and he, to this power of God. I may not know how, but I know who. And then he wraps up this section with the guidance of God. That it's really you and your way that are the way. Think of all the times in our lives, right, where we hit, Lord, I don't know what to do here. I don't know what to do with this decision. I don't know which way to go with this. I'm unsure. I'm unsteady. And I love how Jesus said it in John 14. He says, I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. Jesus like, by the way, all the ways you're looking for, like, do I go this way or that way? Jesus says, I am the way. Like, Jesus is the way that you're looking for. Like, come towards him. David's like, that's right. He'll broaden the path underneath me. He'll smooth out the ground so my ankles don't turn. There's another way I can live. I don't have to just live in the confined wisdom of my own sphere of understanding. I don't have to live that way. I actually can lift up my eyes and see that there is a God-guided life I'm invited to enter into. And boy, David must have known a lot about this. He wasn't near smart enough or strong enough to survive his 60 to 70 years that he's had on this earth now. He's probably saying to the Lord, I should have been dead so many times. But God kept him. Boy, is that a commentary on our lives? Some of you already look back and you know from your history, you're like, whoo, if it wasn't for the Lord's hand here, whoo. And David's like, yeah. So worship team, come on up. Here's how we're going to wrap this up. I want us to think through the power of David's song. And I want us to think about kind of the three rhythms to the song now. And I want you to see if you identify with one of those rhythms most strongly this morning. And maybe asking the Spirit to meet you right there as the team leads us through a sequence of songs in this way to kind of ignite and spark something in here. Maybe it's that first section of the song. Maybe if you were honest, you come in and say, Pastor Eric, it's been way, it's been way too much I and me and my. I'm overwhelmed with my current everyday realities. It's fine to be there to confess that. And I think through David, I think the Spirit would say to you today, hey, lift up your eyes from the I and the me and the my and follow them to the he and the his and the him to see it's not just I and me. It's always been I and he. He's coming for you. He's with you. He hears you. He sees. He knows. He understands. Maybe it's that whole section there. Maybe this stretch of your life right now is God just writing another paragraph of your history with him. The I and the he history. Or maybe it's the second stanza of the song. Maybe this morning you know God's coming to you in a way that this is one of those moments maybe you've been saying a lot, perhaps in your prayers itself, Lord, I don't know how. And you finish the sentence. I don't know how this is going to get sorted out. I don't know how this is going to get answered. I don't know how this is going to get provided. I don't know how this is going to get turned around. I don't know how. And through David's song, I think the Spirit would say, hey, press it one step further. It's okay to bring your I don't know hows. But stay anchored on this. You do know who. We may not know how. But we do know who. Or maybe it's the third stanza of the song. Maybe it's very specific things. You've been seeking the Lord guidance, direction. You've been unsteady, uncertain about some big decisions. And maybe you've been twisting your ankles and kind of falling on your face and your own wit. Whatever that is. And just say, you know what? Maybe, maybe through David's song, the Spirit says, hey, you know what? Lift up your eyes and see that there's a God who's really, really good at guiding lives, way better at it than we are. Let him level the ground under your feet. Let him tape up your ankles. If you've twisted them a bit, tape them up. And let him put a song in that song. A song of the I and the he, the history with God. A song that says, I may not know how, but I know who, the power of God song that says, I know you are the way, the guidance of God. Let's pray together. Father, as we worship now, as the team leads us in song, I pray that you would open our hearts and by the Spirit, would you just strike a rhythm and a chord? Would you lift up our eyes and help us to see? Would you meet us right where we are and just breathe life? Breathe strength that we might write a stanza this morning that you're my rock, you're my refuge, you're my hope, you're my strength, you're who I've really been looking for. Would you come, come now, very personally and precisely to each one and meet us.
us right where we are. As the team leads us, the prayer area is going to be open on both sides. Maybe it's one of those mornings. They're going to lead, I think, three songs here. So just kind of relax and settle in. And if you want to spend some time praying in either spaces over there, you're certainly welcome to do so. And just kind of let the lyrics of these songs begin to sync up with David's song.